but you cannot dream your way to to state house. Oh. So Jimmy and him want to dream their way to state house. Yeah. You can't dream your way to state so house. So there are two things. State house, you must go there. People will not vote based on the old parameters. Mm. People are going to vote critically and largely on what is your solution to the proposed problem that we are facing as people, as Kenyans. There are two routes. At least for Ruto, there are two. Mm. Raila, there are more than four. Yeah. <laughs> because you must now end up with Raila as a spirit. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But Ruto, there are two. There is Ruto, the politician, mm. and Ruto, the leader. Mm. So going forward, Ruto is not a strong person. Ruto is a weak, meek man hiding behind Raila. You know like the this. problem. <laughs> <why>? <laughs> Let me finish. He's hiding behind Raila like this <laughs> as he's leading the country. That cannot be someone you say is mm. politically strong. A very good day to you and welcome to Amen Munyora's YouTube channel. My name is Jadel Kabiru. It's always a pleasure to have you joining us for political conversations. Conversations, I say, I hope will help our political leaders in making better policy and political moves. I'm seated next to Prof. Hamen Munyora, a political analyst and advocate lawyer, uh, Willis Otieno, who is also deputy party leader of Safina. Willis, let's, let me start with you before I even ask you how you are. Are you safe? I'm very safe <laughs> uh, and I'm not scared. You're not scared. If anybody thinks that by providing civic education to Kenyans and providing legal services mm. to those who are illegally detained or arrested by the state, that will be is an offense. Mm. I'm ready to take that plea and I'm not scared of William Ruto or his people. They can take me to court. That is where I swim. I'm a fish in water when you take me to court. Prof, great to see you once again. How <laughs> are you doing this? I'm okay, I'm okay. okay. But why do you bring me next to this man? Is it, yeah? <laughs> In the old in the old days, I would I could I I could also be taken. In the day Jim on the day Jimmy was arrested, this we have been talking with him. Yeah. Then I called Jimmy. Yeah. So if it was the old days, I would also have been finured. <laughs> <laughs> but but Prof, look, your political analyst, your commentator, you've looked, you've analyzed situations as they are for a very long time. What is the pulse of the country? Let me start with that. Jimmy says, "Be a man," tells William Ruto. What is the pulse of the nation? What is happening? I don't know about Jimmy. I think uh, Jimmy and Ruto and Uhuru have their own game. Mm. We shall leave it to them. At one time, we shall know what there is between the three of them. Mm. But for now, the nation, the state of the nation is bad. There's no point of lying to ourselves. Mm. We are not doing well as a country. Uh, what worries me most is that when a country is in the in a state such as one we find ourselves in. A small thing spark and the country go, goes up in flames. Mm. So we are not in a good state. So there's too much tension in the country. Mm. There's too much anger in the country. So you look at this broad-based mm. thing. Let me ask you: Is it quelling things down, or what is happening? It has failed. It has failed. Willis, do you, do you agree that mm. now that we've, we have a broad-based government, four ministers from ODM? Uh, working with President William Ruto, although uh, some are saying Bad is now singing the tune when it comes to bringing back Eko Levy, but would you agree it has totally failed and Kenyans are angry? Of course it has failed. The state of the nation is perilous. And I say it has failed because to begin with, that was not the solution to the problem. The problems that we have as Kenyans, what led even the Gen Z to the streets, and they are still on the streets, even if not physically, but go to online, they are all on the streets. They have all rejected William Ruto, and they are saying, that rejection is informed by his failed economic policies. Mm. He is not able to provide or superintend over an economy that makes meaning to all Kenyans. And taking Badi there does not change the equation. Because look at what Badi is being confronted with today. His first week in office, he's already saying, I'm going to reintroduce the finance bill. That was the trigger of the protests. Mm. That finance bill that was rejected. Mm. So when he says he's going to reintroduce it, how is he going to how is he addressing the issues of but he's saying he will not bring back the sensitive issues such as sanitary the, 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 the rejection of the finance bill was not on specific clauses it was not to amend in fact Gen Z said it very well don't amend don't review reject mm. reject in its totality mm. so every clause in the finance bill was rejected in its totality mm. and even those members of parliament who had voted yes had to go back and eat ambo pie and vote Clause by clause, and they rejected everything. Mm. Now, what Mbadi and Ruto should do 
as a starting point. They should ask themselves, this is what the people of Kenya have given us. What can we do to run a country based on our allocations that we can collect from the people? Mm. Go back to expenditure items. What can you reduce on? And the largest expenditure item mm. of our books mm. is called debt finance. Open that debt mm. book. If you are spending 80% of your revenue, that is 80 shillings out of every 100 Kenya shillings, mm. to pay debt, you must open that book. Now you've heard them saying they are going to borrow now 1 trillion shillings more from mm. the domestic market. Mm. Take a loan of 1 trillion shillings. Go to the budget. Mm. Go to the Appropriations Act. Where is it written that government was going to borrow? One trillion. Mm. They are continuing the illegalities. Mm. What led us to this mess? And last year, Ruto borrowed almost 900 billion mm. from the domestic market illegally. So these people are living on borrowed time. But you listen to former CS Moses Kure. He says, if IMF doesn't come through, the Kenya shillings against dollar will be at 170. Why is it you make things so simple as you explain it, but then government makes it so difficult? You should start by asking yourself, what is IMF doing in Kenya? That's mm. the problem. Because our people, the Kenyan people in their constitution, mm. they have come up with what they're calling a balanced budget. In their PFM Act, they provided that you can only borrow money for project finance. Mm. In other words, when Kenyans adopted their constitution and came up with the PFM Act, they recognized that sometimes we don't have to even do any development if you don't get a donor for it. Mm. But our government, our operations, the running of government, must be financed from our own money. Mm. That is why there is no provision for borrowing for recurrent expenditure. Mm. The only permissible borrowing for recurrent expenditure is for what they refer to as uh, to beat liquidity issues. And it's short term, payable within the year, and it cannot be more than 5% of the previous year audit account. Mm. So if you go by that route, the most that Kenya government should be borrowing within the year, short term, mm. without parliamentary approval mm. and without financing a project, is only up to 90 billion mm. Kenya shillings. They've already done almost 300 billion, uh, 400 billion this year, mm. as we are speaking. What is that? That's the illegality. Next, they'll come to the people of Kenya and ask them, can you give us more money mm. to pay for this debt? That is the appetite to keep increasing taxes, mm. charges, and levies. A failed regime. <coughs> Prof, she says a failed regime, but I'm going back to the conversation about IMF. Where are they in this country? Balancing has been an issue. The president being able or not being able to say no to some of the, you know, demands that he, he's given, but he's still going back for extra loans. Now he's launching a lot of projects. Kenyans are making a mockery out of some of the projects he's doing. What do you think he's trying to do with uh, launching projects, playing politics, and at the same time, his government is reintroducing, you know, the finance bill? First, we will have to agree with Willis that. Uh, Anybody who listens to IMF is either a fool or is mad. Only those two people can listen to IMF. A fool or a mad person. And now we're referring to the president. So I'm saying uh, in terms of... You, 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 you can go on. <laughs> That's up to them. Yeah. Whether it is the government or the president, I don't know. But I'm just saying, if I were to listen to IMF as an individual, mm. I would either be mad or a fool. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Um, and that's, that's the truth. Mm. And many people have said about it. A lot has been written about it. Mm. They don't put off fires, they put on fires. That's obvious. Mm. We've been at this thing from 1982, it was structural adjustment programs. They have never helped any country. So I'm saying you can only be a fool to mm. believe that after all these failed experiments, IMF can save an African country. Mm. So uh, I, I, I don't really think they are supposed to be here. Now we go back to the launching of projects now. Oh. It seems like we are doing well economically. That's yeah, that what is the another, that, that is, you us. see, this country, we run it like, we run it like, a, like, a, like a joke. So, because many of the things we do don't make, don't make sense. They don't add up. Mm. Willis has said, and I want to support him, faced with the situation of not raising 340-something billion, because of the rejection of the finance bill of 2024. What do you do? Mm. Do you go and borrow a trillion? I think a trillion. You, you want to double because you've been denied by the finance bill, 340 something, 346 mm. or 344. But you are saying you are going, on top of cutting down many other things, you are now going to borrow to bridge a gap of 300 billion with yes. one trillion, three times more, and then cut things. 
Uh, you, you can see a lot is not make, making sense. Mm. Secondly, face with the same situation. What is the logical thing to do? Don't you just go to the books and see what you can remove? Mm. I know Jimmy and, uh, and, uh, and Wakil here talk about funny things about our debt. I'm not an expert. I don't want to go there. Mm. But I'm just looking at the budget. I'm seeing there are things in the budget which, you, which if you remove, you break nobody's bone. Mm. Look at how much money we give them peace to go and play around with in constituents. We know everybody knows it's a joke. Mm. Why don't you start by stopping that money you give people to go and flush around with? Mm. To flush around. And there are many other things within the budget. Now again, if you are a sane person, and I'm not saying people are not sane, mm. but I'm just saying if you are sane, mm. with all these cash problems, would you be launching and promising. And I'm not saying the president. We are all doing it. All leaders at yeah. all levels, governors yeah. are doing it. Yeah. MPs are doing it. MCS are doing it. Everybody is promising something somewhere yeah. and attempting to do something somewhere, however badly, yeah. however poorly. Then we are not normal people. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. This is not a country of normal people. So do you believe the country still stands with Ruto as its president when it comes to You've always maintained that there are people who still love the president and they can vote for him, yes. but he's making it difficult. Do you still believe that this is the case? Of course, there are many people who would die with the president. That's If you say there weren't people, then you can also be a fool. Mm. And I don't think I'm a fool. I don't want to be a fool. Mm. So I know there are many people who will not only vote for Ruto if there's an election today, but they are willing to die for him. Mm. They are there, and they are not few. B based on <laughs> yeah, yeah, based, many. On, based on how he has based been working, on, based on many things, uh, yeah, including someone who, who like the way he looks. <laughs> <laughs> and then will you tell me? Will the dynamics be the same? Because but if you're asking me about politics, whether the country is happy enough to vote him again, uh, the answer would be no. The country today, I've said already, is angry, mm -hmm. is bitter, mm -hmm. is hurting, and as usual, when people are bitter, hurting, and angry, mm -hmm. there is only one person to blame. And the president. Mm. And the, who paid for that? When people failed, especially from Mount Kenya, mm. their businesses had gone down. Everything was going the wrong way, especially Mount Kenya. Mm. This, they, they, they evicted him from the house. So, they didn't want to listen to him. <laughs> and he was their own son. Yeah. So, if we are saying politically, mm. would it be a safe time for Ruto? You know, in some countries, like parliamentary democracies, the the Prime Minister can dare people, can call their bluff, bluff mm. like in the UK, for example, mm. by calling for an election, even mm. Italy. Yeah. What are you thinking? You say I'm not popular? Yeah. Election next month. If Ruto does that, <laughs> suicide. <laughs> tell, tell me about your candidate, because it seems like it, there's one thing to love. There's another thing for people to look at issues. Talk, talk to me about what Safina, maybe your candidate, or your thinking in terms of going into 2027, because... It's love versus v, the situation on the ground. Will people look at the situation on the ground or will people will just go back to their tribal cocoons and who they voted for before? You know, Jimmy Wanjigi is an intentional politician. Intentional. He is where he is because he designed it that he must be at this particular point. Mm. And if you look back, the first person in this country who started talking about debt as a problem way back during Uru's time was Jimmy. And he gave predictions that Debt is going to cause a revolution in this country. In fact, in December last year and in January, in December in Mombasa, meeting convened by Okoa Uchumi, mm. Okoa Mombasa. He actually said there will be a revolution in this country. I'm giving William Ruto until March mm. this, this year. That was in December. He repeated the same in uh, Kiambu. But he said, William Ruto, I gave you three months. One is gone. You have two more months. If by end of March things don't change, prepare yourself for a revolution. Mm. Because he was saying, the way you're running this economy, this is going to come to a ahead and you will not survive. Mm. So we've defined the problems of the people of Kenya. We've defined the problem of the next election, whichever time it will be called. Mm. And that problem is the economy. Whoever has an answer or has an understanding, a grasp of the problem, mm. and that is what Jimmy is, he understands the problem. He has proffered a solution by saying, if the greatest expenditure item of your books is debt finance, then go and open those debt books. Try to find ways in which you can reduce how much you're spending in debt. Because Kibaki at the time he was living, he was only spending 18 shillings out of every 100 on debt finance, 18%. Mm. Ruto is spending 80%. Uru was spending 
aspect of his collection. So you must go back down to the Kibaki figures. Mm -hmm. How? Number one, we are saying some of the debts you are paying for are odious, they are illegal. Mm -hmm. That money never came into Kenya. That money was taken in a way that Kenyan law did not allow it. If somebody took Eurobond, two billion, which project pointed to me? Mm. This is the project that Eurobond financed, mm. Eurobond one. This is where Parliament approved for you to take Eurobond mm. loan. If they don't exist, you say that's odious, we're not paying. Mm. And there have been seven others, six others, there are seven Eurobonds. Mm. So you must look into them. Go to the domestic banks, domestic lending, borrowing. Mm. Kenya government, in the period 10 years, has paid almost uh, three trillion as interest and penalty, uh, penal, interests and uh, principal mm. on domestic debt. Go to those banks and ask them, and we owe them now almost 55% uh, of our debt is domestic bank. These banks that keep floating bonds and bills and government buying, mm. tell me which project is your bond financing? Mm. Which project is it financing? Where did Parliament approve for it to be taken? Mm. And we'll say, I'm sorry. If there is no project it financed, mm. there was no parliamentary approval, we will not pay, can't mm. pay, won't pay. And then you remove from your back the burden of debt. Mm. Of course, there are consequences to it, because mm. then you are not able to access the market. But with the money that we are collecting as Kenyans already, mm. we are actually able to live within our means. Mm. You just now adopt austerity measures, and you become prudent in, and focus on boosting production. The major difference between Jimmy and Jiggy and myself, compared to Kenya Kwanza mm. and even Azimio, is one thing. Kenya Kwanza and Azimio practice what is called demand-side economics, mm. where government is the driver of everything. Mm. Tuta jenga, tuta leta, tuta, tuta. It's about government dishing goodies. Mm. They believe that there's a big cake in Kenya. The work of government is to dish. That mm. is why Ruto goes out everywhere, saying how oh, what he will do. Jimmy believes in what we call supply-side economics. Mm. Supply-side economics is about three things. Number one, reduce government presence, deregulate. Mm. Then, reduce taxes. Then you empower the private sector. Mm. Let me give you an example. Look at the domestic banks today that we have, the banks that we have here. Their number one customer is government of Kenya. The money they are holding that they're going to sell to government of Kenya is your money, my money, our deposits. Mm. A big chunk of it is even money that is held by government entities. Mm. These parastatals, ministries, their monies are in banks. Mm. Now the same banks take that money <laughs> to give to government yes. as treasury bills and bonds. So it's government's own money mm. is given to government at a high interest rate. Mm. Then government comes to you, Jadiel, and tells you, now we took a loan from government, from uh, this bank. Now we need to increase your tax to pay for that loan, mm. interest. You see how ridiculous that is? Yes. Now as we are saying this, Government, get out of domestic borrowing. Mm. Get out. Government will not take any money. When we say government, re reduce government, deregulate, mm. empower the private sector. Mm. Now the banks have money at hand. Mm. These banks must pay their shareholders dividends. Mm. They must pay interest to their depositors. Mm. Now the bank will start hawking loans to you. Mm. They will come to you, Jadiel, this is what we have. This is the loan package we have for you. Mm. Just to even furnish your house, interest rate, 2%, mm. 3%. Now the private sector will be able to access this capital that as it is now, government has crowded them out of it. Mm. You imagine the potential you are going to unleash across the entire country. Mm. When all these many Kenyans with innovative ideas, mm. what they lack is capital, mm. will be able to access finance at a lower interest rate. Mm. So when government says we are going to build affordable housing, mm. they go to Omabe and are building 110 units mm. at a cost of almost 300 million. Yeah. I mean, what is 110 units in Omabi County? Yeah. And you're trying to make like a very big thing. No. What you need is allow the people of Omabi, mm. those who, have, uh, who are credit worthy and have access to financial fin financing, mm. to access the market. The interest rates should be lower. Mm. Right now, if they go to the bank, because the government is borrowing at 17%, the individual is told, we'll give you a loan at 25% interest rate. Mm. That's an unperforming loan straight away. Mm. But if the interest rate is 3%, 5%, mm. you'll find an individual going to the bank, take that loan, mm. and build even more than the 110 units that the government is putting up in Omabi. Mm. And it can happen across the entire country. Mm. That is the major difference between Safina, as led by Jimmy Wanjiki, mm. and Kenya Kwanza. So 
when you see, for example, ODM members walk into Ruto's government and they continue, like, there's even no meeting to harmonize manifestos. Yeah. Because <laughs> fundamentally, yeah. <laughs> what ideology that drives them is the same. It's demand side economics. Yeah. You cannot see a Safina person like myself or Jimmy. Mm -hmm to walk into Kenya Kwanza because we are totally ideologically opposed to each other. Mm. Because as we believe in less government, mm. we believe in an empowered private sector, the individual, as the driver of the economy. Government is just a facilitator. And that is the solution that as Jimmy, Wanjigi and Willis, mm. we are presenting to Kenyans. We can actually transform this country but, but, within a year or two. But this is a big problem, ideology amongst our leaders, that yeah. even when they were being vetted, they said, our manifestos kind of look no. the same. It's just that we didn't understand hustler fund per se. This is the problem we are, we are looking there's, at. There's no ideology. They believe in nothing. <laughs> if, if, if we believed in anything, this country would be fine. Nobody believes in anything. Mm. Yeah. And uh, even those who believe in a small thing, like uh, my friend here, mm. They are not willing to to push it hard enough to change this country. Oh, fundamentally. Why so? Because so, <laughs> are you saying they are not willing no, no, to push no. it. No, I'm, there I'm is no, because I'm, there is no ideology. They have a small a small <laughs> thing, <laughs> and I agree with him and Jimmy that uh, <laughs> uh, oh debt, uh, oh, how we should. By the way, what he's saying about borrowing was there by the, by the time Moy was just short before Moy left. Mm -hmm. Why would you have done a business? You just lend your money to government. Mm. Interest had reached as, mm. as high as 45. Yeah. What business would you do? Mm. You just put your money in the government and wait and eat. That's what people are doing. Mm. So when Kibaki came and government pulled out of domestic borrowing, mm. people were hawking loans in 202, 203. Mm. Ukiingia, ukitoko kwa hotel, there are girls and boys outside. Yes. Please take. That's how, that's how Mukopo Wasalo started. Yeah. A loan with no collateral, no security, nothing. Mm. Just your pay slip. Come, back, uh, come back to why you think, <laughs> yeah. even if they have an idea. They have an idea, yeah. but there are two things. Number one, these were very good ideas. But you cannot dream your way to, to State House. Oh. So Jimmy and him want to dream their way to State House. Yeah. You can't dream your way to State so House. So there are two things. State House, you must go there. The two things. You must get power to do, to do, yeah, to do big things. things. Yeah. No, the first thing is the one to dream. Yeah. Why am I saying they are dreaming? Yeah. You cannot put voters down, sit them down and begin telling them about the economy. They will beat you up. A friend of mine went to campaign in my, my constituents. Yeah. Then he had a manifest in this book. Think we are going to transform Hamis constituents. People told him, go home. <laughs> go to school. <laughs> you know, yeah. Professor, go and teach. Yeah. We are not your students. Yeah. So these, these nice ideas, you cannot sell them as a way of getting power. Mm. No. Not our, not, our, not our setup. You get it? But what, what do you need to do? Because now so that's you... number one. The number one is that uh, you cannot sit people down mm. and start a conversation with them about the good things of the economy. But isn't this what we saw with Gen Z fighting to, finance? I was going to say, say, you know, you know Prof, <laughs> he's still analyzing Kenyan politics and discourse based on the old parameters. Mm. What he's saying is true. In the old Kenya, you will not go to campaign on a manifesto. Mm. But there's a new Kenya that is emerging. And if we are not careful, many people in the political scene are going to be swept away without knowing it. Now, for the first time in the history of Kenya, what I want to say, for the first time in the history of the earth, mm. We are the largest concentration of Kenyans in the CBD that has never been seen at any given time. Even during the movie must go, during the fight Saba, for the Saba, and Saba, Saba. Saba. The congregation that we saw in Nairobi over this 18th June and 25th June, mm. that, those numbers were unimaginable. But what led them to that? Mm. There was not a single leader who you could say they were responding to his call to action. Mm. There was no leadership. But there was what we call individual anger that was driving these Kenyans. And that has become now the conversation all the way back to the villages. Mm. Even those who are deemed to be unlearned or illiterate, they've understood this issue. And they're saying Gen Z is driving the agenda. Mm. And that agenda is an economic agenda. So take it from me. Mm. In the next election, whichever time it will be called or mm. held, people will not vote based on the old parameters.
Mm. People are going to vote critically and largely on what is your solution to the proposed problem that we are facing as people, as Kenyans. Mm. William Ruto, after getting Raila support, mm. he has tried to go around the country, trying to launch projects and do PR. It just took one individual, mm. Morara, Kebas, mm. just one individual to take away William Ruto's mouth. Just by imitating exactly what William Ruto was trying to do. You know. So he dipped, <laughs> he clipped <laughs> that old politics. An individual. And he didn't even go to 100 of them. He just went to less than 20. Mm. Just to show to you how ridiculous what Ruto is doing. Mm. And Ruto now cannot go back. In fact, anytime now he goes, you saw even in Yamira, when he went to say those nonsense of his, mm. people told him, ah, the university is a lie. Mm. You're lying to us. He tried promising the university. They said you're lying to us. Mm. Because Kenyans are now woke. You see? And these ideas we have that Prof says yeah. we are dreaming ourselves to power, <laughs> you will see it happening yeah. because we are addressing a woke generation. Pro Prof, are they dreaming you, you are dreaming, the one you see. The past? You know, it, it could be you the see. one who is not you in our see. country. Uh, I, 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 as a young man, I admired the policies of the Labour Party, which at that time was uh, center-left, more on the left, mm. more pro-people more of a welfare state than the conservatives who are center-right and so on and so forth. Gradually over the years, even the extreme parties like still Labour, what was it called? Was it called? Liberal Party, Liberal, I think. Yes. Mm. They are all, all moved to the center and even extreme. Mm. There was a man who, who was very promising to become British Prime Minister. I think Neil Kenok, I can't remember. I think Neil Kenok. He lost the fight to become British Prime Minister as head of Labour. He gave a speech I've never forgotten. He said, we have tried to help the British people. We have come up with policy that will change these people live decent lives. But they have not listened. Me, on my part, have lived a privileged life. But the majority of this, my countrymen live very miserable lives. Labour proposals, proposes policies to make human beings live dignified lives. But of course we have refused. In the normal tradition, he resigned and went. What am I trying to say? I'm saying it's not just Kenya. The voter is really very ra is, is really rational. So if you think you are going to make people sit down somewhere mm. and explain to them mm. <laughs> why they are suffering and why you can come in and help, you will not go far. That's what I'm saying. That's the dreaming part. Why do you think Trump doesn't even have to say anything serious? And people just listen to him. And that's America for you. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you get what I'm, I'm saying. Getting you. You're getting me. But, but then so I'm... what I'm trying to say, there are three ways we can get somebody in state house. Mm -hmm. One, let's not talk about it. The revolutionary way, the ugly way. So, but, so long as we stick with the normal way of an election after five years or thereabouts and what, there remain two ways. The first way will be the traditional way we elect. Mm. The second one, which I want us to uh, 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 live for the time being, mm. is through some minor revolution like the Jainese revolution. Mm. So if we are not do going the revolution way, either the major serious revolution or the Jainese revolution, mm. if it's a normal election, mm. and I think we are seated here to talk about a normal election, mm. a normal election, You'll be dreaming if you think you'll sit people down but, 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 and talk uh, to them about... Let me, let me just ask Prof. Let me just ask Prof. Do you yes. think we are living under a normal election kind of time? Exactly. That is, that is, that is, that, 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 that is the question. That is the question. Mm. There are those of us who would pray, hope, fight for, mm. push for, that we re-engineer our politics. Mm. So that this time round, we use different parameters when we are electing our leaders from MCS all the way to the president. Mm. But since it is more of a hope mm. and we pray that it happens, mm. we can only now discuss about a normal election that will pit William Ruto in a normal election mm. against Kalonzo Musioka, Jimmy Wanjiki and somebody else. In that election, yeah. 
Yeah. You are not going to sit people down and tell them yeah. about the economy and the vote. Let, 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 let me say this. Let me say this. And before as you, say, you, ask, as you say that, you can maybe uh, tell me whether Jimmy Wanjigi is the official opposition because uh, Raila has left. I was going to say this. Jimmy Wanjigi is now the face of opposition in Kenya. And William Ruto has realized it. That is why you are seeing the onslaught on Jimmy Wanjigi. He's being attacked on everything. Hmm. They are even creating fake charges against him. But I want to explain to Prof something. Yes. Just using the Labour Party example that he gave. Hmm. And this was done after there was a committee that they set up because from 1979, the Labour lost party, Margaret came in, to 1997, mm. Labour kept losing elections. And they set up a committee to go and inquire, why are we not gaining votes? Why are we always losing? And one thing came out of that committee, because Labour was about workers. They were still talking about uh, working hours, minimum wage, mm. social welfare of the worker. But what they didn't know is that in that period, post the war, majority of those who are workers, traditionally aligned to labor, had now moved to middle class. They didn't care about minimum wage. Mm. They didn't care about working hours. Because those are not issues that are resonating with them. Mm. So when labor was campaigning and saying, minimum wage, minimum wage, somebody is comfortably earning 10 yeah. times the minimum wage, mm. to him, labor is making noise. Mm. Then they've now moved to new things. Mm. They want to see the quality of life improving beyond what was basic before. Mm. So the committee recommended that labor must change its messaging from advocating for those traditional mm. worker issues that they were, uh, they were known for, mm. to start now talking about things that affect people in their homes as of now. Mm. The recommendation of that committee is what led to Donny Blair becoming prime minister in 97. Mm. So yes, that man was lost. Mm. Nick was lost. But what brought Labour back to power was when Labour changed their messaging mm. and started talking to people on their issue. Mm. So also here in Kenya, I'm telling you the revolution that we are witnessing has no face to it. It is Kenyans in their own space. They are saying we are tribeless, we are leaderless, we are faceless. Mm. Saying this is our issue. You imagine when that group will organize now around an individual that they say, this is the individual who represents the issues that we are advocating for. Mm. That individual will win this election by a landslide. Mm. And so far, what everybody seems to be clear about is that there's a rejection of William Root across the board. Mm. Even if you go by the traditional voting methods that Prof is used to, mm. even his own college in backyard, mm. the demonstrators in Eldoret and Kericho were no joke. Mm. It is actually his people, uh, to suit his... Uh, Fraternity club was even attacked mm. by their own people because they were not saying that it's no longer mutuated to politics, it's about an issue. Mm. And we believe your opulence and your governance is causing us pain when you people are enjoying. Maybe you so, I need to understand this. Mm. So, William Ruto is gone, even we are, we are done with him. The question is when, not if <laughs> yeah. he's gone. That's that's so, part, part of the dreaming. Now. You are left, he's gone, yeah. he's gone. <laughs> William Ruto, as per the last election. Mm. I want to tell you this, if you and anybody who is watching, if you are to invest in a stock market, you do what is called a perception view mm. of the stocks. So William Ruto started at 7.1 million votes. Mm. What is the perception today of William Ruto in terms of his vote stock? The perception that is he gaining any more new votes from the 7.1, or is he losing? Even with this broad-based broad government, even with this broad-based government, is he gaining or losing? The perception across the board is that William Ruto is losing votes. He's actually drained votes mm. at a higher rate than even him knows it. Mm. Then you pick Jimmy Wanjigi at the last election. Mm. You say Jimmy Wanjigi, as per the last public record of you, you have zero votes. Yet zero. Mm. William at 7.9. 7.1, sorry. Mm. Jimmy Wanjigi had zero votes. If you look at the perception today, is Jimmy Wanjigi going to negative or is he increasing votes that you can increase to no 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 to no, 50, no 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 i'm just telling you no no it's an upward trajectory for him yes. even if he gets only two or three mm. okay so yeah that yeah. is an upward yeah. take yeah. yeah yeah then you look at kalonzo the last record of his votes maybe around six hundred thousand. Mm. is he gaining or is he losing mm. then you look at all these three and you decide mm. which of these three would you say is going to be the promising the next bull mm. william Rook cannot be a bull Remove him. Him is done. Mm. You will now be looking at Jimmy Wanjigi and mm. Kalonzo. Mm. 
as the ones who may be having an upward tick mm. in terms of the perception on their votes. Yes. But then now between the two of them, the person who will come with something that the people resonate with, is it the economy, which I believe it is, mm. because the next election, the question of the election is about the economy. Mm. As James Carville puts it, it's the economy, stupid. Well, and in that election, yes. Jimmy has provided the present the problem and he has presented a solution. Mm. And the sweetness of uh, pudding is in is the, in the, the, in the, the <laughs> well, yes. you, is Ruto gone, no. kaput, no, he's alive. out. Also, and as you tell me that, that's part of the dreaming. <laughs> I, I hope we can get into a conversation about Raila leaving active politics. Yes. Is Ruto kaput? No. That 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 is, that, is, that will be a joke. Ruto's popularity is dwindling. Mm. But Ruto still has a lot of votes. There are two Rutos. At least for Ruto, there are two. Mm. Raila, there are more than four. Mm. <laughs> because you must now end up with Raila as a spirit. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But Ruto, Ruto, there are two. There's Ruto, the politician, mm. and Ruto, the leader. Mm. The sort of person to manage issues of the country. He has failed. But the root of the politician is still going up. What we are witnessing mm. is the failure of Ruto, the leader, the manager. How can it be going up? As a politician. Where is Raila now? Okay. At the stroke of a pen, ODM is gone. Mm. And, and will he inherit yeah, Raila's okay. constituents? He's, he's, he's going up politically. No, no, no. That's a question. Will he inherit mm. Raila's constituents? Of course. Stock and Barrett. Uh, of course. Stock and Barrett. No Stock and Barrett. There's uh, no Stock and Barrett. So he's getting less? No. Of Raila's votes? He wasn't there yet. Yeah. So I mean, he wasn't less. there ever. Yes. He didn't have Raila's votes. As now, he's, he's, even he's, if he he's, gets, he's, he's even if Jimmy gets, uh, let's say, out of, uh, out of two million mm. uh, Luo votes, even if he got 500, mm. that is great. Just like Raila got one million of the Kikuyu vote, mm. Mount Kenya votes. And people are saying but, but prof, that Mother Karua and Uhuru no, brought nothing. But Prof, that yes. presupposes yes. that William Ruto is maintaining his 7.1 million. Mm. If William Ruto maintained the 7.1 million votes intact, yes. including Mount then Kenya, he, including Mount Kenya, 7.1 million. Yes. In fact, of the 7.1, 57% of those votes, mm. around 4.3 million, are Mount Kenya. Uh, Fort Imagine, actual 47. It's 57. Mm. I ran my math. Oh, it's Mount Kenya. Of, whatever, yeah. yeah. Now, if Mount Kenya leaves William Ruto, which they have done, the gap that they've left, mm. Ruto even getting 100% of the low votes. Mm. We not fill that gap of Mount Kenya. That is why I'm saying William Ruto is kaput. It is political smarts, as he mm. says, mm. in terms of the administration. Mm. Survival yeah. for one week or two weeks. But you see what I'm trying But to mm. in terms of winning an election, mm. the gap that mm. the votes he has leaked, mm. whatever he's going to get from the Raila votes, cannot fill it. But, but you see what I'm trying to say is uh, uh, Ruto is smart because Anawapanga. And our panga work, panga raila hapa, panga mm. And I will not be surprised in the fullness of, the fullness of time mm. if Alonso joins them. Mm. Yeah. So for the and people, many of these other politicians. So, for the so, people, uh, uh, so it becomes Ruto, Jimmy, Ruto, 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 the politician, is very successful. So it is Ruto versus Wanjiki at that point. They, Let's say Alonso joins, as you're saying, yeah. the hypothesis. I, I, I was, so hypothetically, yeah. Alonso joins. Yeah. So it is Ruto versus, versus Wanjiki. Wanjiki. So let, let, let's wind because we can now we can now, we cannot agree on this one. Yes. But are we in a moment of constitutional change? Because you listen to the conversation in the country, how comes we have this broad base, no some cut, handshake, cooperation? That's the root of the politician. I, I'm saying even with Uhuru it happened, even yes. with Kipati it happened. Yes. If Jimmy let's say becomes president, would this be the case? And how can we solve this conversation about every leader needs to entertain or to bring in the opposition? You know. Uh, for Ruto, I don't even think it was his desire to bring in the opposition. Ruto had been dealt with by Gen Z's and they had finished. Parliament had been breached by Gen Z's. They had actually done. The speaker that the people recognized, that young man who was shouting, Mr. Speaker, sir, mm. I'm here to address you. <laughs> that is the speaker of Kenya Parliament until the next elections will be held, not to Etangula. Assuming he's still there. <laughs> then you had uh, Ruto, they are now telling him, we are coming for you. <laughs> Occupy status. They are coming for you, for him. So what Ruto did 
which will mean survival. Yeah. It's not life, it's survival. Yeah. Was to reach out to Raila to give him a shield. Yeah. So as we speak right now, mm. Ruto didn't seek Raila <laughs> because he wanted to. Yeah. Uru in particular, for him, he made his uh, peace with Raila very early in his term. Mm. That is somebody you can say, he was saying, okay, me, for me to manage this country from the beginning, mm. I must bring Raila into the room. But for Ruto, he was very clear. In fact, in his public posturing, he had said, mm. you are not coming. No, no, Sumkate here. Mm. I don't want you anywhere in my room. Mm. But when the time of reckoning came, and Gen Z had put him, in fact, they had him on target. Mm. They had a date of destiny with him. Mm. They were going to remove him. So he runs to Raila to give him a cover. Mm. So going forward, Ruto is not a strong person. Ruto is a weak, meek man hiding behind Raila. You know like the this. problem. Why? It, let me finish. <laughs> He's hiding behind Raila like this <laughs> as he's leading the country. That cannot be someone you say is mm. politically strong. You know. Because if today, mm. just take it this way, if today Raila was to say, okay, fine, I'm also leaving, Give, I'm taking away my cover, deal with your Gen Z's as Ruto. What option does he have? He's somebody who lives, mm. you know, when and I always <laughs> say, the weakest president in the history of Kenya <laughs> is William Ruto. Let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. In Nairobi, we have two barracks. We have the Central Barracks and the Western Kenya Barracks mm. that combines those two communities. And the rest of the country normally lives in the Western Barracks. I call it the Western Barracks. Mm. Then you have the, the Central Barracks, which is largely Kikuyu. William Ruto has no barrack in the city that he controls in terms of vote basket. Mm. He has none. So what he had when he came into office was the Central Barracks. That is the barracks that rebelled, they mutinied and left him. Mm. So he's now gone to Raila's barracks constituency, the Western barracks, to give him cover, to live in the city. Mm. Now, if Raila were today were to say, I'm taking away my barracks, get out of my barracks, go back to the street, this man will be treated like a street dog. <laughs> People will stone him because you he know. has no home. You know sometimes, so, you know. Let me finish, bro. I don't finish this point. So I don't <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. So, yeah. he is totally exposed. Mm. So all that he does, that Prof thinks is a is smartness, to me, mm. these are what we call tactics, survival tactics for the day. Mm. He's counting every day. Every day counts. Every day is important. Because left on his own, people can chase him off the streets. <laughs> yeah? So he must live off someone. No. He becomes, he becomes the you, people you, you people, you love, you love football. I don't. Yeah. I don't even watch. But you have noticed there are times when, for some reason, the goalkeeper is not in the goal. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's going after the ball, Lama Sangine Metereza, he has slid away and people don't score. Normally, everybody sees it is an opportunity to score. And then they <laughs> it is, even those who would have given a pass don't mm. give. They think, ah, I also want to be celebrated. Mm. This happened in this country in 1992, the first party mm. election after so many years. Everybody thought Moy was so useless. Mo, if you talk to Moi, people just laughed. That was Moi's weapon. People thought Moi had gone. And that's why everybody stood. Mm -hmm. Nobody could live for the other. It had to wait until 202 when Moi was leaving for the people to get together. Mm -hmm. These political hallucinations and the dreams, mm -hmm. these uh, people being politically romantic, mm -hmm. is what will make a president who would have been removed serve another term. Mm. If anybody thinks Ruto is a pushover, mm. then Ruto is going to win so comfortable mm. and I will be there to laugh. You have to begin you have to begin by saying knowing two things. Mm. Number one, Ruto is strong. Ruto is not weak. Mm. He's vulnerable. By letting go of Mount Kenya recklessly through the treatment of Ugashagwa, he is gambling too much. So he's exposed and he's, he is vulnerable, but he's not finished. Mm. The second thing you need to know is whether it is by Gen Z or a change in the way we identify our leaders, the Kenyan psyche is still viewing politics in terms of big names. Big names, sometimes even big families. Regional kingpins, Mababe Wakisiasa. So until you elevate yourself to the league of the Railas and the rest, or you wriggle through the way Ruto did, the politician, the, the, the voter in Kenya 
will bypass Jimmy Wanjigi and go on Matiangi. Mm. You, you get it? So it, it is for people like Jimmy Wanjigi who may offer some solution. I don't have much hope in all these politicians mm. that say they, they, they can do something small. Mm. This country requires a serious transformation which not Jimmy or any of these people can offer. Mm. And they are not even willing to offer even if they were given the power. For them to stand a chance, they must warm their way to the league of the big names. Because when Kenyans are looking for somebody to vote, they cannot be looking for a small person. Mm. They are looking for a big name. So somebody like Jimmy, with all his ideas, mm. has to propel himself into the league of the big names. Mm. You, you get it? You wanted to say something, Akili, <laughs> no. but I also want you to tell me about whether Jimmy can deal with this situation of broad base and whatever. You know, you know what I wanted to tell Prof is that yeah. Boy survived in 92 and 97 because of one thing only. That time it was first past the post, winner takes all. Boy just needed a majority of the votes. He became in the president because he got 31% of the votes. Yes. Left. The rest shared. 69% of Kenyans rejected him. But because that time it was the one who has the majority, becomes president. Mm. William Ruru is now confronted with a 50% plus one. So even if the opposition on their own mm. couldn't, can't agree on a single candidate, they will be forced into a runoff. Mm. And you take a president or runoff election, that is minced meat. That one is minced meat. There is no president who you can take a runoff election and he'll survive. Mm. You'll finish him early in the morning. Then number two, when Prof says that... Uh, Jimmy must find a way to catapult himself to be a big name. I mean, as it is now, I think Jimmy is a household name. They need to be introduced. Mm. Everybody across the country. But not in the league. Big, no, no, boy, no. big he, boys club. In terms of, he's a household name. Mm. Yeah, also, but not big boys, boys club. And he's also a bowler mm. in his own space. Mm. What he has not done is to be clubbed. He's not clubbable. Mm. Into that club of Raila and Ruto. <laughs> he's not clubbable. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He's independent. He's showing independence. But when you see even when Jimmy is facing his tribulations, who is that one person who you can say can bring everybody now runs to his doorstep? Mm. You see Raila going there to responding. You see Kalonzo coming. You see Martha coming. Eugene. He's a natural, what you call, uh, what you can call a, a, a national co confluence mm. of all these competing politicians. Because his history is very deep. His roots are deeper than what Prof may say on, on air. Mm. <laughs> but he's not somebody. Somebody who tells Ruto, I'm coming for you. Mm. <laughs> I'm coming for you. you came, I'm coming for you. Yeah, he said they, are, they, are, they, are, they share secrets we don't know. Yes. Oh, what I'm saying is, but he he's must. Deep. Willis. Deep. So, Prof, what I'm saying Willis, I, I where in the Prof, Jimmy, Jimmy and Akuita, Naibu. Yeah. Yeah. Because where in the Naibu. Na mimi na kusaidia. And I'm sending a fee note. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the opportunity is there. Yeah. The chance is there. Jimmy is my friend, you know that. Yes. And I can assure you, mm. if we listen to people who know politics like Manyora, mm. he can join the league. But you must first join the big league. When the people are looking for a leader, they don't look down. Mm. They look up there. Yeah. You must be there. Uh, Daniel, <laughs> I only have one, point, one response to that. Yes. When God had gotten tired of Saul as a king, mm. And he sent Samuel to the house of Jesse mm. to anoint a leader. Mm. Jesse, in his human eyes, brought his sons who are older and who are warriors in the field, who are battle-hardened, mm. to become <laughs> the yeah. new king. Yes. Until Samuel said, no, there's one you've not called. I said, ah, that is just a hard boy. Uh, Leave him small, little, small boy. little boy. Yeah. Just there herding sheep. Can't be the one. Samuel said, no, bring that is the one. Mm. And that is how David became yeah, anointed. But we are using so even God's this eyes. Our Jimmy. Yeah. No, no, even this Jimmy that he says. <laughs> we are looking, we, using human eyes. Yes, yes. We are looking, so, we are using are just, human <laughs> eyes. So, Samuel was using God's eye so prof, to look for the so leader. Prof, so, Prof. <laughs> but we are using human so eyes. Prof, prof, you are just... And we are looking up. So prof. When we look up, if we don't see Jimmy yes. up, if we don't see Jimmy up, yeah. how will we elect him? But Jimmy is killing lions in the field. Yeah. But David, down David, here... I understand what David, 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 yeah. David, David, He's hunting squirrels. As this was happening, <laughs> David was killing lions <laughs> to protect his... The electorate are not seeing as God. As Prof is analyzing politics based on the big boys, he's up here, 
eh? Jimmy, yeah. David, is busy killing lions here. To protect no, squid, the herd. Squirrel. No, lion. Squirrel. David was killing lions. <laughs> let's, let's and Saul, Saul has noticed that there is a warrior there who is so strong and is killing lions with bare hand. That is why you see Saul sending Eh? You, see, you see, John, tell you Willis. I want to tell. I want to tell. Raid Jimmy. I want to tell. To try to brand him as a terrorist, as an anarchist, yeah. because he knows deep down. Let me they, tell you. They know something about let each other. Let me tell you. Yeah. Deep down, even Jadian, <laughs> if you are sitting in a position of leadership, you know it. You can spot it. You can feel it. Yeah. Who your threat is. You know what Jimmy would need to do first before he even gets up for us to see as Kenyans. He has Mount Kenya to reckon with. While he's busy hunt, hunting squirrels, Gashagwa is establishing himself mm. as the man to beat in Mount Kenya. Mm. So what Jimmy will need to do first and mm. foremost is to stop Gashagwa's rise. Mm. So that, because all politics is local, so that he comes with that basket of votes, which is the Biggest basket in the country. Uneka kwa meza, pop the way Uhuru was putting there, Urukibaki. Everybody runs away. Mm. The millions of votes that come from the basket. So, first, on his way up, on his way oh. up, where we, from where we can see him, Jimmy must dislodge regarding Achagwa mm. as the Mount Kenya King P. Respond. Let me tell Prof this. Prof keeps analyzing our politics today and into the future using the old frame. Mm. That style Prof is talking about, yes. that has been applied, has been used, it, it worked for those days, those times. Today, when you see the kind of demonstrations in Rift Valley by challenging youths, mm. they are even attacking their own. Now you want to tell them that in the new politics, I am a Mount Kenya leader, I am a Kikuyu. Gashagwa has lost, Gashagwa is not even someone you, that one, uh, Kenyans left him for me. Yeah. <laughs> I will eat Gashagwa for breakfast when we go to cafe. <laughs> one, uh, if I, I'm running an oppose, yeah. so I would have an obstacle. You, you, for said, deputy, you said, for deputy, Willy said, for deputy, when, uh, Willy, let, me, let me remind you, you yeah. said, yeah. the test of the pudding and is in the, is the eating. eating. And I'm promising you Because both. the voter, the same man oh. who, the same man who will vote for either Jimmy or Gashagwa yeah. is on the ground. We'll have, we'll have, we'll have to wait let, 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 let's do a way forward. Let's do a way forward. Let's do a way as you finish. Yes, yes. You have a response. Yes. Way forward. One, can we deal with broad-based government? Two, what should Ruto do? Or is there some hope for him in the future? And three, what will the electorates look at? When it comes to the next election, we take one after the other, or we take them together. Let, together. Take Let's them together. take them together. Okay, first, first I'll say this. <laughs> Raila has left the scene. He's gone to AU. And uh, as things stand today, all signs are showing he will win. Unless the devil comes somewhere yeah, yeah, to that's spoil true. it. But we hope he succeeds. Mm -hmm. But with Raila's departure, it's going to completely alter our political landscape and thinking. Because for the last, like, almost 30 years, Raila has been like the boogeyman of Kenyan politics. So those who have used to selling their politics based on scaremongering Kenyans with Raila's name, mm. will have to look for a new trajectory, a new platform. They will not find it. And that is why I'm saying, Prof, going forward, start analyzing politics with a different lens, not the old lens. Mm. For William Ruto, he's living on borrowed time. As I told you, when he came into office, he had Mount Kenya support. That support is gone. He's now living on Raila's support. With Raila's imminent departure from Kenyan political scene to go to continental, even the kind of sway that even the local community who have been looking for up to Raila to give them directions, it will wait. Mm. Because even Raila himself will not have the time to engage locally because their job is growing. You wake up in Nigeria and you're having dinner in uh, Cape Town, and the next day you're in Cairo. It's growing. You will not have the time to mm. engage actively even if you wanted to. So William Ruto will soon realize that. What he got from ODM mm. could only buy maybe a month or six at most. Mm. And then he faced the reality. And that reality is that your next president is Jimmy Wanjiki. That is the person he's going to face. Mm. As to the process that will lead to Jimmy Wanjiki being that formidable candidate, mm. what Prof is talking about, bring Mount Kenya first on the table, pap, bring who? Of course, those, are, those can be discussed, mm. the process, how to get there. But what I can assure you, way forward, the next contest, and Jimmy has dared William Root. I am coming for you. Mm. 
will he need a will he need a broad based government no it will be a government that is informed by an ideology what broad base can you form if you are a supply side economist with someone who is a demand side economist prof <laughs> way forward well my 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 only fear is that uh, we may not manage to remove Ruto under normal circumstances because of this daydreaming. Mm. So daydreaming cannot remove a, a bad president from power. Mm. Because it is sad, many people will say it is sad, and I think it must be sad, that mm. if you stopped people at the coast today, all of them, so now, take the vote. Mm. Ruto here, Jimmy mm. Wanjigi here, somebody else there, they will vote for Ruto. Um, big numbers, mm. numbers, maybe, that, maybe, Jadiel, numbers Jadiel, that will surprise Jadiel, Jadiel, you. I'll, 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 I'll just make a suggestion. Yeah. While at it, just uh, post it on the for, there, poll. on the comments. Yeah. Poll does poll, Jimmy mm -hmm. versus Root. Yes. Now, you see, yeah. <laughs> it's unfortunate, again, yeah. and maybe sad at the same time, that much as there are many people who, for the first time, would disregard Raila and Luo Nyanza, mm. people who can even almost tell him off. It used to be Miguna alone. Now there are many voices. And there are many people openly are not happy with this, collab co this collaboration between Ruto and whatever, this coll collab between yes, Ruto and them. Right but the sad truth, which is actually very unfortunate, is that many Luos are already celebrating this government. Mm -hmm. And if a vote was taken today, over 60% of Luonians will vote for Ruto against any other candidate. These are the realities. So what I'm saying is Ruto has not performed well. Actually, to me, he has been very underwhelming. Mm. He is a source of the pain we are going through. But if we think we can dream our way to state house and remove him, then he will go back. Dreaming is saying he's finished and he's not finished. Mm. These are games they are playing. Only four or, or five Luos are in government. And the whole of Luo land is celebrating Ruto nah, and his not, not of Luo land. <laughs> What I'm nah, saying is, the opposite. this man is called Willis. He's a very promising young man. He's a very serious lawyer. He's my friend. If he went in any sub county in Luo Nyanza mm. and, and, and talked against this collaboration, people beat him up. Nah, <laughs> that, that's a many Luo platforms. No, no, yeah, I, want, yeah. I want to say I something for, for him yes. and for I Kenyans. You see, mm. you have just given Joho a seat at the coast, and already people at the coast can, can, are embracing Ruto. You've just given f four or five ministers. The game has barely started. Mm. Do you know where Winnie, would, Winnie, Winnie will be in this game? Mm. Do you know who else Raila will fi fish mm. out of somewhere and push to work with Ruto? Mm. Do you know who even will be Ruto's running mate mm. in 2027? Do we know who will be the, the prime minister? And the, the guys have all the cards. And we are playing here saying, oh, you can't. They have all the oh, cards. Bro. Let's, 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 let's <laughs> wind up. There's no love for Ruto on the street <laughs> as we speak. Let's People wind are up. done with that yes. Let's just wind up by agreeing. Yes. For you, it's if elections are held the traditional way, yes. Ruto will win. It's not easy to beat him. But for Willis, you believe that we are not there anymore. Thanks for tuning in to this conversation. This has been a conversation about politics and policies in this country. Have yourself a lovely rest of your day. Hopefully we'll have this team back again next week.